那今天在这个段落，我们很高兴为您邀请到呃，我是要的康的的，然后还有呃，我在台湾的某位在那边，我来为您讲两场两个段落，一个是关于 Five Five 三在呃新的东西，或者说对给使用者、给 developer、给 session 合作者呃的一些改进。那以及我们来为各位讲解那个 Portable Software 的一些概念以及制作方式。那我们第一场就交给 t e s 来为我们介绍 Web3 啊，呃 ，So ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Seth Spitzer, and I work for the Mozilla Corporation, and I'm a Firefox engineer. And today I'm going to speak about Firefox 3 and the current status and how to get involved in this little project. Let's begin. So in Firefox 3, we have uh, many new features and improvements. Some of the features and improvements we have are for the end user, for people developing content, for people writing web applications, and for people doing add-ons. Also can present uh, an update on the schedule for Firefox 3, and various ways to get involved in Firefox Google's own project. For end users, we've made several new improvements. Uh, there'll be improvements made to the way we handle uh, content, we made improvements to the bookmarks and history organization. We made, we're making improvements to the download manager. And uh, we're going to make it easier for you to custom, it easier for you to customize Firefox. Uh, we're all, we can always continue to focus on security and there'll be improvements to make Firefox more secure and to make security easier to understand. And we're making improvements to host integration. For content handling, been uh, participating with the What Working Group, which is the working group, uh, which is a coalition between Firefox, Opera, and Safari, and it, they're focusing on the uh, we're focusing on the uh, web applications. And so, one of the improvements that uh, all these browsers are working to uh, add are to allow web applications to register as content handlers. So, a good example of this is when you're on a web page and you have a, you, uh, a mail to URL that normally when you click on it would launch your default, your default mail application, the one native to your operating system. In Firefox 3, you could register, uh, websites can register as handlers for that protocol, for example, Gmail or Yahoo Mail. And this will extend to all types of content and all types of uh, protocols. Additionally, we'll be integrating better with the, with the operating system's MyCap registry, and we'll be allowing the user to manage their plugins as add-ons. This means if you use Macromedia Flash and there's an update, instead of having to go get Flash and update it manually, you'll be notified within Firefox if there's an update that you can automatically download and install it. Additionally, for the end user, we're spending a lot of time improving bookmarks and history. So in Firefox 2, when you want to search your history, or if you want to search your bookmarks, there's two different places to do this. And in Firefox 3, we're going to make it so there's one unified place to do all your searching. And additionally, we're going to improve search so that uh, we search more of the fields that we know about, uh, places you visited, including all the, uh, the meta tags and um, additional information such as content within the within pages you visited. So, the fourth item here is on full text indexing, and for Firefox 3, what we're going to do is take an index of pages you visited and store the index in Firefox, and then later when you search for history, it'll search through the content of pages you visited. The intent of this, of this change is to make it so it's easier to find things you visited without having to remember the title or the URL. Additionally, for Firefox 3, we're going to add tagging support to bookmarks, Better integration with sites like Delicious that uh, that offer tagging functionality on the web. Again, for the for the end user, we're making many improvements to the download manager. A frequently requested uh, feature is to enable the user to pause and resume downloads in between sessions. So in Firefox 3, you can be downloading a large file and quit, and then when you start back up, it will resume downloading. We're also going to do, uh, take steps to integrate with uh, the user's virus scanners and malware detectors with the download manager. So 
Firefox, building on Firefox 2, Firefox 3 is going to allow for even more customization. Like Safari, we're going to allow you to resize the search bar. We're also going to uh, allow you to persist your per site text size doing. So frequently you'll, you'll visit one website and always increase the text size and then go to another website and decrease the text size. So in Firefox 3, we're going to persist those, those preferences on a per site basis. Additionally, we're going to make add-on installation even easier and make notification of updates to add-ons even easier and be a user. Finally, in addition to managing plugins like Flash and Java as add-ons, we're going to allow the user to manage search plugins and uh, spell checking dictionaries as add-ons. So we're moving all the all the plugins and dictionaries and search search plugins into the add-ons manager to make it easier for the user to keep up, fully up to date. Firefox 3, as with previous versions, is very focused on security. So some of the improvements to security are support for EV certificates. EV certificates are extension validation, extended validation certificates. And these are certificates that have been fully vetted by certificate authorities to show that they are who they say they are. For example, um, eBay, uh, they have EV certs. And i 7 notifies the user when you visit eBay that this is eBay and it's not just a secure connection. And Firefox 3, like I said, is going to represent that to the user. Additionally, security is always confusing for the end user, so we're taking steps to make it easier for the user to, edit, to identify which website they're visiting, the context of the, of, the, of the connection, and the strength of the encryption. We're also going to allow the end user to blacklist scripts, sites, plugins and extensions. Uh, blacklisting extensions is important because if we if we determine that an add-on, a popular add-on is insecure or has a vulnerability, this will allow us to to alert our users and prevent our users from running that extension until it's been fixed. Another goal of Firefox 3 is better integration with the uh, user's operating system. For example, we're going to integrate with uh, parental controls on Vista. IE7 has uh, Vista and IE7 have worked together to allow you to set up parental controls outside of the browser, and so Firefox 3 will, will defer and respect those settings. Additionally, we're going to integrate with the uh, native password store system. So, for example, on Mac OS X, that will be an uh, integration with Keychain. For notifications, will be integrated with Growl on Mac OS X. Now I'd like to describe all the improvements we're making for content developers in Firefox 3. One such improvement is we're going to be we're going to make sure that Firebug works very well with Firefox 3. Firebug is a popular add-on for Firefox 2 for content developers to debug and uh, debug their JavaScript, CSS, and HTML for their own websites. Firefox 3 also has full support, uh, fully passes the ASIC 2 compliance tests, and I'll show some screenshots of that. Additionally, Firefox 3 is going to have support for animated ping images. And it has a fast native get elements by class name, which is one of the, uh, one of the new DOM methods specified by the web working group. Here's a screenshot of Firebug. Firebug is a popular add-on written by Joe Hewitt for content developers. Right now, it only works with Firefox 2, and we're going to make sure that it works well with Firefox 3. You can get it right now for Firefox 2 at getfirebug.com. As mentioned, um, one of the other one of the other uh, things that Firefox 3 will do is add support for animated ping images. So, as as you all know, ping is a, a better image format than GIF or, or JPEG. It has uh, support for app channels for better transparency, camera correction, and interlacing. And now in Firefox 3, you can have animated ping images. So here's an example of one of my colleagues wrote, which is an animated Firefox icon. The good thing about uh, animated ping images is that they degrade nicely. In uh, other browsers that don't support animated ping images, you just see the first frame of this animation. Content developers uh, also have, uh, will have native support for get elements by class name. This 
is another uh, specification introduced by the web working group and for for web app, for front end developers and web applications. The WebWG is recommending get elements by class name. And here, this chart shows the performance improvements we've made. To the, to the right is a version using the, tree, the DOM tree walker. And moving towards the left, the, the, these are DOM implementations. And the blue column is an implementation using XPath. And to the far left is, is the native implementation of Firefox 3. The Firefox 3 implementation is quite fast. It is um, eight times faster than the XPath implementation and 77 times faster than the DOM implementations. These are just some details about uh, what we're doing, what that chart represents, uh, how to implement get elements by class name using get elements by tag name, get elements by class using uh, by XPath. So these are just the details. For web application developers, people like Gmail, people like Yahoo Mail, um, anyone who's using the web 2.0 technology for making a lot of improvements. So as I mentioned earlier, we're allowing web applications to register as content and protocol handlers. This will allow uh, websites like Google with their with Google documents to register as handlers for spreadsheets and for Word documents. And this also allows web, uh, web mail to register as handlers for the mail to the URL. Another improvement we're making is for offline browsing support. I'll go into the details of that. As well as we have support for we're adding support for IE's HTTP only cookie. Sorry, cookie entry. And the question about the protocol handlers. Yes. Is that integrated with the OS? So like, you know, if I, I click on a mail link in Word or something. So that's good. so Aaron, um, to answer that question, we're integrating both better with uh, the native OS MIME type registry. Uh -huh. And so the hope would be that Firefox would register we pass to the register that it is the handler now for mail to, right. just like current other mail applications. Okay, that's what I thought. And we have external support to Firefox 3 already for the WebWG's pink attribute, and I'll explain what that is in a minute. So for offline browsing, we're following the WebWG's recommendation, and we're, we're adding support for the online attribute. This is an attribute off of the nav, nav gear element that allows you to know what your current status is. And the hope is that Web applications will use this to, so the script can conditionally uh, take action whether you're online or offline. Additionally, the WebWG is recommending that we have new DOM events for, for when you go offline and when you go online, allowing the, allowing the script to trigger off those events to take the actions that are necessary. Together with the, the DOM storage, which is already part of Firefox 2, this allows web applications to uh, write script that allows them to work well offline and to work well when you go back online. So something that's brand new for Firefox 3 is the offline cache. So using the, using the link tell tag with the offline resource rel attribute, this allows uh, script uh, HTML to, to register that certain resources should be available when the browser is offline. What this will do is it will ping, it will, sorry, it will pin resources into the offline cache that are guaranteed to be there when you're not online. So frequently you would want to you would want to pin uh, resources such as images, script, and perhaps even the XML data into the offline cache so you ensure that they're available. In addition to using the link tag, you can use a new navigator property called offline resources so you can dynamically pin uh, resources into the offline cache. Also for web application developers, we're, we've got experimental support for the, the ping attribute off of the anchor tag. This is another recommendation by the WebWG. So as this example shows, it's frequently with search engine providers, they want to track uh, your search, uh, what you click on, which, which result you click on. So the, the two ways they typically do this, one is with a, uh, a redirect CGI, like the one listed up here, the first example. And so when I search for OSDC, the actual, the actual link to where I want to go is embedded in this other URL that the search provider uses to track which search I choose. Another typical thing that they will do is use JavaScript to track where you click. In Firefox 3, we have support for the ping attribute. 
and this allows the web application developer to list the actual URL as the href attribute, and then list other URLs as on the ping attribute. So what Firefox 3 will do when it sees this tag like this, the user, when they mouse over it, will see the link that they want to go to, it, so they'll click on it, and then in the background, Firefox will issue a request for all the ping uh, URLs listed. Right. To answer Dan's question, you'll be able, uh, this allows the end user to turn off the ping attribute for privacy. What, another feature that we are implementing comes from IE6 Service Pack 1, which is the HD only cookie attribute. So typically, um, so what this, what this, what this uh, attribute does for cookies is it tells the browser that this cookie value is only supposed to be sent to the server and it's not supposed to be uh, visible to script. The reason why you would do this is one of the rewards for cross-site cross scripting attacks is for other script to be able to look at your cookies. So a common example, example would be you get a cookie from Amazon and then someone has a cross-site scripting attack and they can view that cookie. So what this attribute indicated here in red does is it tells the browser that this that this particular cookie is not visible by script, even by the desk, by the source uh, URL. So if Amazon sends a cookie with this attribute, even Amazon's script can't read it, only the server. And this was added, as I mentioned, by IE6 Service Pack One, and this is a this feature is being backported to from to Firefox Two. I'm sorry, this feature, this feature is going to be in Firefox 3 and we're going to backport it into Firefox 2 because it's a uh, security measure for our users. For add-on developers, um, we're, we've got a lot of improvements. One such improvement is the Firefox user extension library, which is we call, we're calling Fuel. I'll go into the details of that. Just as uh, bookmarks and history are being improved for the end user, there will be many improvements made for add-on developers. We're also uh, adding some new Zool widgets and Zool tree improvements. Additionally, we're, we've added an idle service. This allows add-ons to get notified when the user is not taking any action. This is a popular requested service. This allows um, people to write add-ons that do work when, the, when Firefox is idle, when the user is not moving the mouse or typing on the keyboard. For example, um, the delicious add-on uses this service to do all its network activity when the user is not doing anything else. And we've and there have been improvements to both the Firefox 3 client side and the add-ons.mozilla.org side for internationalization. So here's some details about the improvements we've made to Fuel. One such complaint we've gotten from our add-ons developers is that Firefox, the code for Firefox from JavaScript to do things like adding bookmarks and managing your extensions are too it's too complicated. We have internally we have uh, XPCom technology which is a little too heavyweight and could be made simpler. So what we're doing is we've got a wrapper library to domify our interfaces. So basically if you can um, write JavaScript to manipulate the DOM, that that level of uh, complexity is what we're going to offer you for manipulating the Firefox browser, such as the current tab, adding a bookmark, uh, managing your extensions. Another complaint we've had from add-on developers is that things break every time we ship a new version of Firefox. So by adding a level of indirection with, with Fuel, there'll be a consistent interface that you can program to and the implementation will change, but not the interface. So, so it's, Fuel right now is a very simple, uh, very simple library with, with not a lot of uh, uh, objects or interfaces to uh, support it, but these are the common ones that have been requested, such as uh, manipulating the application, uh, manipulating the, the Browser, the current browser tab, the extensions that are that are installed, manipulating toolbars such as adding new toolbar buttons, hiding and showing toolbars, um, access to the the underlying storage database, and manipulating bookmarks such as adding and removing bookmarks. For, as I mentioned, for uh, add-on developers, we're going to improve the uh, bookmarks and history interfaces. In Firefox 2 bookmarks was written. Uh, within RDF, which is a technology that Firefox uses internally, but which can be overly complex for add-on developers, and usually 
add-on developers will shy away from, from writing add-ons for bookmarks in history. But for Firefox 3, we're going to follow the fuel library's intention of keeping a simple interface that won't change over versions. And we're going to provide a, so we're going to provide a simple and robust a, API on top of bookmarks in history. For those add-on developers who want to make more complex add-ons, uh, bookmarks in history will be written on top of a, a SQLite database, so they'll have access to um, they'll have access to bookmarks in history without having to know RDF. Another, uh, another uh, improvement we're making in bookmarks in history is the ability to do generic annotations. What this means is you can write an add-on that can associate any, any text with pages you visited or pages you bookmarked. So your add-on could then retrieve that information. So uh, one, one idea we, that we're investigating for Firefox 3 is the ability to make a note of any page you visited, store it in our database, and then when you revisit that page, the note will show up. Again, for add-on developers, we've got new Zool widgets. I don't know if everyone can see these screenshots, but we added a scale widget, a, uh, a number text block widget so that it only accepts numbers and there's a uh, up and down button, and a time picker widget. Frequently, add-on developers have had to write their own calendar widgets by hand, so uh, what we've done is we've moved these into the Zool library, so we've got a, a date picker and a date picker grid. These are these are these will be available for Firefox 3. For the add-on developers, we're also improving the, the tree widget. We're allowing you to do horizontal scrolling, individual cell selection, inline editing of cells, and we have an overflow attribute which will allow uh, cells with too much text to spill into the next column. So with uh, with all of our Zool improvements, we listen to our add-on developers, see what the most common requests are make them to the next version of Firefox. So we've, we've made some improvements for internationalization. Now, this live today on addons.mozilla.org, we've got uh, add-ons localized into 13 languages. Additionally, you can search uh, for four add-ons in, in uh, multiple languages, and the reviews and uh, the captions for the screenshots are all now localized. Right now, as I mentioned, we have 13 languages, but we're adding more. In Firefox 3, you'll be able to have application management with Calpax. This means that if an add-on ships like Firebug that has not currently been translated into a particular locale, when that, when that translation is available, the Firefox will notify the user that uh, the translation is available and can download it and install it automatically. So I'd just like to quickly go over the, uh, the current schedule for Firefox 3. Alpha 3 is already shipped, so you can download it today. And in Alpha, in Alpha 3, we've got the, we've passed the ASIC 2 uh, reference test. The offline resource rel tag that I mentioned is available. IE, IE 6 is uh, HTTP only cookie attribute is available and working, so if you have a, a web service, you can already use this attribute. The widgets I mentioned, the Zool widgets such as the scale and the date picker are available. And history is already written on top of that SQ, uh, SQLite database. So you can already start planning with that. Alpha 4, which is due to come out this month, will have the first fuel library. This is the add-on library for Firefox developers. You'll have support for the animated painting. And you'll also have uh, bookmarks on top of the SQLite database. Pretty soon, uh, after We'll have uh, Alpha 5, and Alpha 5 will have even more improvements I mentioned, such as allowing web applications to register as protocol handlers and content handlers. And we'll add more support for bookmarks and history of the improvements that I mentioned. For, for Alpha 6, there's, there's several alphas where we are. As with Firefox 2, our ship date is not date driven, it's quality driven, so we're going to make sure before we go beta that all the main features are ready and uh, we have plenty of time for our users to give us feedback. So for Alpha 6, we're going to finish some complete improvements to the Download Manager and more improvements to bookmarks in history. As, as with previous versions of Firefox, we won't 
we won't uh, we won't declare beta until all the features are done and the UI is frozen. And once the UI is frozen, we'll give our localizers a chance to localize all the strings. And beta one um, gives us a chance to, for our localizers to complete the localization, so that beta two will have our first localized build. So now I'd like to go over uh, various ways that you can get involved with both the Mozilla project and Firefox. One way is spread Firefox. This is our web. This is a website set up by the community for marketing ideas for how to get more people to adopt Firefox. As um, another another way you can get involved is by logging bugs, which is with our web database Mozilla.org. Frequently, um, different uh, different groups will set up a gateway project, and we recommend. Um, this is a way you get involved, which is to set up a Bugzilla pro uh, gateway in your own in in your language, and then help us by being the gateway between the English database of bugs and the Chinese database of bugs. Other ways you get involved are to work on add-ons. Um, as I mentioned, Firefox 3 will have a support for the fuel library, so it'll be even easier to write add-ons. And uh, there's also our last project. Um, at labs.mozilla.com where we're, we're working on uh, new, new experimental ideas for Firefox 3, such as um, Operator, which is a microformats detecting add-on. And um, uh, we've also got projects for uh, at labs.mozilla.com for Coop, which is a social networking service uh, add-on. And we welcome feedback and participation on labs.mozilla.com. Other ways that you can get involved with the Firefox project are to help us uh, edit and create and translate documents on the Mozilla Deve Developer Center at developer.mozilla.org. And as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, our add-ons translated into 13 languages, but several add-ons don't have translated screenshots or translated content or translated strings inside of the add-ons, so we're always looking for help. <laughs> I have a little time left over, so I'm just going to ask my colleague Seth Binderdale to present um, a summary on the, the Firefox project.
anyone have any other questions about Firefox 3? Yes. Can we get Tamarin in Firefox 3? So that's something we're work, working on for the Mozilla 2 effort. Okay. Um, I, so that's kind of going on in parallel to the Firefox 3 effort. Right. I don't think that Tamarin will make its way into, into Firefox 3, but it's something that some of our developers are working on in parallel with, the, with other efforts. Yes. So that was a uh, that was a dispute with the uh, the Debian folks over the um, what could be what could and could not be called Firefox. And uh, uh, Firefox is open source, and and anyone was able to the underlying code for Firefox is open source, but the branding of Firefox is is a different issue. So they are able to take the code and and make changes um, and ship it, but not called Firefox, so they're allowed to call it something else and they chose Ice Weasel. FYI, Debian has the same rule about their brand. They don't allow them to change it. Um, Seth Victor Daniel, also Seth, and um, I work on the Mozilla Community Project. We have a thriving open source community at Mozilla. Um, many of those people work on the creation of Firefox, and I work to support the community and empower individuals to continue to contribute in a meaningful way to our project, because it really is um, so closely tied to our success, our history, and our pride is that we have a very thriving community to help create. You can read most of what I'm doing at my blog, blog.mozilla.com. Um, and as you may know, Mozilla's mission is to promote choice and innovation on the internet. Uh, we believe that user choice uh, enables innovation, which ultimately helps everybody like you and me uh, with our experience on the internet. You can see um, Mozilla back in 1994 uh, was Netscape. Um, many of you know and remember this browser experience. We've come a long way. Uh, Firefox 2 released in November of 2006 had 10 million downloads in the first 10 days. So um, certainly a very proud of our success. This is a timeline of the history of Mozilla, it opened the code in 1998, and since that time, as an open source project, you can see that we've grown uh, to 80 million plus uh, users worldwide. This map represents a distribution of our market share by region uh, globally, and you can see that we're very strong in places like Europe, um, Australia, Asia is growing. And some figures suggest that we have about 16% market share worldwide uh, aggregate. We also are very proud to localize Firefox in 40 or more languages. These are recognized languages that uh, we work with the localizers to make sure that they're able to, to ship in Firefox. And this chart shows a breakdown of users by uh, region. So there are many languages that we could have included. These represent our major, major languages. By far, most users come from English-speaking languages. But you can see that in places like China and Taiwan, about 2% of our users 
are represented by this region. So it, it, it presents an amazing opportunity for growth and uh, a very important place for us to, to work. So Mozilla Corporation has roughly 100 employees, and yet we have 80 million users worldwide. And the question begs itself, what makes this possible? What makes Mozilla possible? And of course, it's the community. We have 2,000 plus community contributed extensions. Um, I'm sure each of you probably uses some of those extensions. Those are created by 1,000 plus um, contributors to our code base. Hundreds of localizers help make those 40 plus languages possible. And we have thousands of evangelists and volunteers who are helping to spread the word about Firefox, whether it is taking on a very active role in communities like Spread Firefox, or very simply putting a banner on their blog that says, Get Firefox. From a global level, uh, very active participation, very critical participation, you can see that 140 developers from our community actually have the privileged access to check code into our, our source code. That doesn't remove people like you or me or others um, who want to make meaningful contributions. It's just that these are people who have trusted knowledge and experience of working with our code base and can change the code uh, for, for updates. Those check-ins um, have been um, put in place by either employees or others. For instance, there are 250 additional volunteers who have um, recommended patches to our source code that have been checked into Firefox. Uh, those patches are based on a large part by bugs that are filed, and we have over 50,000 different bugs filed. Uh, by over 50,000 people have filed bugs in, fire, uh, in our bug tracking tool called Bugzilla. You can see similar numbers for Gecko, which is the platform that Firefox is built upon. More um, global numbers, we have over 1,000 extension developers who have created those extensions. Spread Firefox, you may know about. Uh, 200,000 people have signed up. 70,000 people have posted banners on their blogs. I have one on my blog. Very simple way to get involved in the community. And in 2007, as an example, uh, to the very active participation by our community, if we look in Bugzilla, we can see attachments of patches by people, and then we can determine who exactly submitted those patches. Of all patches submitted in this year, 37% have been contributed by non-employees, which um, is a really an active number for those people who are just part of our community taking a, a really uh, meaningful role in the creation of Firefox. Here are some activity numbers on Bugzilla. I mean, it's pretty staggering that there are 260 plus thousand accounts in Bugzilla. 24,000 plus of accounts are active. Uh, 16,000 have reported bugs. Every day, we have a thousand comments in Bugzilla. And uh, this year alone, we've had um, 3,930 bugs fixed. Um, the triage of bugs is a very uh, important process in how we work uh, to work on those. And inside Bugzilla, you, you have the ability to, to rank the status of importance and assign that to an individual who then works on the bug. And so trying to triage those bugs and determine what's the most important. Um, in some cases, bugs will remain open because they may not be determined as critical as the next. And the person who is assigned the bug, oftentimes it can be a module owner for a specific piece of the project that they're working on, or just one of the leading developers, will determine um, how critical it is to work on those. And so this is all part of a larger concept that those who take an active role and want to work and contribute will make sure that those things get fixed. And it's not uncommon to see someone report them, the bug, work on the bug, resolve the bug as fixed all by themselves. In fact, I believe Seth uh, Spitzer has, you've had examples like that where you've reported the bug, detailed the work, resolved it as fixed, and it's just a way to document the project 
and, and, and the progress you make on it. So um, they do come in very quickly. We can't get to every bug every day, but the, the triage process allows us to determine what's most important. In Taiwan, um, certainly we have a, a very active community, thanks to individuals um, in here who have really driven a lot of participation and adoption. Uh, Bob and Jose are two of the community leaders here. Many of you probably also participate in a very meaningful way. We're very thankful. Here is moztw.org, a localized version of Mozilla. And we have, between China and Taiwan, around 1 million active users. Here are some more pictures from the uh, Mozilla community in Taiwan. We're very thankful for all the work you guys have done. Um, we continue to visit the region and uh, interact with everybody here because it does remain such an important part uh, and region of opportunity for us. So what a unique example of how our community has done even more creative things to propel the adoption of Firefox uh, has come through in Firefox Flicks. Uh, maybe some of you have seen these online, but these are um, just examples of movies that our community created to help drive adoption. Uh, over 300 entries were submitted in three months by volunteers across the world. The very high quality commercials premiering in places like the San Francisco Film Festival and are currently airing on uh, television in the United States. So this is an example of a, a video created by community members. We asked for people to do that. A group came together, created that, and um, that's now showing on television. Uh, we'd like to say we had a lot to do with the creation of that, but what we really were able to do is view it and realize how, how, how nice a commercial it was and what could we do to promote that uh, even further. You had a question? Yeah, um, for very detailed business questions, I'll refer people to Gen, who is our Director of Business Development in Asia. I can speak very generally about that. Um, we have a parent company who is the Mozilla Foundation. The Mozilla Corporation is a subsidiary. And um, in the United States, um, being uh, incorporated as a private corporation allows us to enter into business contracts with more freedom. Um, and that has enabled us to do that, and the benefit has been that we now are able to make revenue to pay people like our employees. Um, so a lot of it comes down to sort of uh, corporate structure inside the U.S. business context that allows us to enter into business contracts. Yeah, it really is part of the magic and innovation of uh, Mozilla being able to offer a product for free that's very innovative and extensible, but at the same time benefit from strategic partnerships and earn revenue. So there's no cost to the consumer, um, but there are business partners who realize the benefit of having their name associated with a product that gets in front of 80 million people every day. So uh, maybe some of you have seen this attempt at Firefox Flicks by the Taiwanese community, Miss Foxy Lady and Thunderbird Girl. Um, though not officially submitted in the Firefox Flicks, this was an example of how the Taiwanese community came together and um, tried to promote the release of Firefox 2. So in the streets of Taipei, we had volunteers meeting people, interacting face to face, and you can certainly go to uh, the blog if you did a, a search for Miss Foxy Lady and Thunderbird Girl, you would find this, and you can watch about a minute-long video of people interacting right here on the streets of Taipei. 
So thank you. Those are that's all that I had to present. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have another presenter uh, now. Do we have one? Another presenter now? Okay. Um, at the end of the session, we have some Firefox uh, memorabilia to give to you. So please, if you're interested, come up and say hi. We can maybe give you t-shirts, stickers, something like that. Okay. Thank you.
。那第二个是说原生的 portable 的 open office 的 portable 大巴的那个，主要是要有它的安全防护的部分。那再来，呃，这个这些工具，我想我列出来是因为以前用到，可是。现在其实用不太到，就是因为现在不管是 Open Office Portable， 或者是呃跟着 Open Office d o g 或者是 m o s i a Firefox， 都有所谓的自动更新功能，所以变成说我们做这样的事情，变成是不是那么必要的事情？那所以其实这个 UP UPX 或者是 PNG Out 去做压缩的动作，嗯，我想这个动作就是。留给社群版去做这样处理这样子。那如果说我们是以官方的版本去做出、去做成 portable 的版本的话，那这个东西在你自动更新的时候，它就会被回复回来，所以变成说没有特别的意义这样子。好，那这是。我们制作的流程，那制作的流程上，其实很简单，就是说，我们只是把原本英文版的东西给换掉。那我们要注意的一些事情的话，呃，这个要，我觉得比较要特别要提的就是，因为之前很多人会说，英文 Open Office， 它。完整安装大概有两百多 MB 大，可是就会有人说，我只要用到里面的，比如说 Writer 或者是 i n p r e s s 那会有人说可不可以直接做精简？呃，这个答案是可以，可是精简，因为它主要是一个 kernel 在那边，然后它用不同的 switch 来的指令去做说把叫出 Writer 的功能，叫出 Clock 的功能。叫出那个 i n p r e s s 的功能，所以如果说当只要精简掉某一样的功能的时候，其实这个效用是不太大的。所以基本上，除非说有特别的不允许的状况，我会觉得说，其实就完整的放进去这样子。好，我们接下来是那个 f i r e f o r c e Portable 的实作的部分。的材料工具啦，那最重要一点的话，我想，因为这个部分最重要部分是，我们并不需要去直接去使安装它的程式，才去才能去取得它的东西，所以我们只需要说准备像七七七日本这样的解压缩的软体，因为它是用七日本去把安装程式给包起来的。那等一下我会示范制作的一些，譬如说，呃，解压缩还有组合，然后我会另外用，因为 f i r e f o r c e 本身有原生的那个中文语系档案，那我会用 Thunderbird 的呃呃 s u b b i r d 的部分去做这部分的做本地化套件的使，直接换入本地化套件的使做这样子。
，就是原生好，原生做好的那个 i p a s s protocol。那它的安装步骤其实就是 unpack 的动作，所以所以基本上只要花一些时间在 unpack 的动作上面。稍等一下哈
全释的目录在在这个 A P P 里面，那 A P P 里面有一个 f i r e b o x 资料夹，那在这里面的话，如果说你今天想要把社群版的，你如果用惯了社群版，想要把它换进去的话，可以直接放在这个资料夹里面。那我们现在是要直接放 extension 到这个目录里面，那就是放到 extension。那怎么放呢？就是现在我们示范的这个是一个叫做 operator 的那个 operator 的那个不同套件解开来，我要强调说，我解开来并不是说要真的要这样解，而是说我的目的是要看这个这个 ID 的部分，因为这个我们等一下用到。好，那我们要解到怎么样资料夹？就是要解到一个放在 extension 里面要放一个资料夹，那这个资料夹就是刚刚我复制的那一个 ID。
们现在实做的部分是实做那个三分二的。三十块的这个是这个本地化的部分呢，因为我们是使用那个社群给的提供的套提供的套件，那比较不一样的地方是说，那我们手动要改的东西会比较多。那但是说这个东西是可以说就是。可以说是就是，所有只要 Firefox 或者是 s u n d e r b i r d 全部都使用。那这是他原来写的档案。那我们是要放在主程式 s u n d e r b i r d 的这资料夹里面有一个 chunk 的资料夹。那 chunk 的资料夹里面有一个 ENUS 的这个这个档案。好，那我们我们要置换的部分就是这两个档案。那我们要做的是，因为要让系统要让 s u n d e r b i r d 认认得这两个中文的答案，我们必须把它的同样的答前案前面同样答案的名称的那个点 m a m a n i f e s t 的部分，这是一个文字档，把它给修做修改。所以我们用 l o c a l w e b p a d 来做修改，那就是把所有原本 EUS 的部分换掉，换成换成我们要换的 D， 就是繁体中文化的档案的 DHC 档案。注意一点的就是说 ，Z H T W 和 T W 要大写，这有大小写之分。那同样，另外一个叫做 E N U S 点，原来这个答案也一样，做同样的。做同样的修那我们存档之后，那就是要改外面实际的档。
那我们这样子就做完最重要的中文化，让他认得原本的，让让他认得中文化套件的部分。那另外一个部分，如果没有做的话，忘记做的话，其实其实是还好。可是我会建议做，原因是像说像浏览器上面的话，会会认说这个是这个是是不是说是中。这是中文的浏览器，还是是使用者是中文的？他会认 user user 的那个 agent 这样子。那这个部分在 profile 里面的 p r e f j s 哎，对不起，是在 p r e f 里面的这个 l i n j s 的部分。那一样，其实我们只要用即时的去开发就可以了，因为它也是。只要找到这一行，只要找到，只要只要找到现在显示的这一行 ，general use agent， 把它换成，把它的语系换成我们要的中文就可以了。最后稍微提一下，就是说，其实其他的只要是所谓的 Firebase 的软体都可以这样子做，那那那就是要去改写那个原本的它的 l a n c h e r 这样子，那 C 方比。因为目前它不支援所谓的 profile 的参数，所以它目前没办法这样做。然后我大概讲的大概是这样子，谢谢大家。